Yes. It's yeah, easy you know what, that, that, that's what it, you know what it is. It's a young league now. Like you look at these guys, like, like there's not many 35, 36, 37, 38 year olds playing in the league anymore. Well, like when we came in and I hate to sound like that, but it's true. If you had two rookies on your team, that was a lot. Okay. Yeah. Look at all those guys that started in the minor leagues that were great players. You know what I mean? But you've had two rookies on your team. That was a ton. I don't remember anybody ever having three rookies on the team at right. the same time. You know what I mean? You just put your time in, went to the minors, worked your way up. And obviously there's always, you know, the, the top guys that are no matter what aren't going to start in the minors, but for, for the most part, everybody started in the minors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, I was going to ask you about that. And it was because, a veteran league, you know? Yeah. That, yeah. That um, so you, you leave college, you obviously were a scorer. I mean, you, you put points up like crazy. You go, you go to Albany. Cause it, like you said, they're not. Oh, yeah. My first two years were Utica. your first. Yeah. Utica. Sorry. I'm sorry. Albany, uh, Utica. And you actually had points there too. So, I mean, were you a first, second line player there? Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> so I came out, I signed a big ticket out of college too. It was a big contract back then. And, uh, Lamorella, the devils, they were loaded at center. You know, mm-hmm. they had that they had Neil Broughton, they had I don't know, they had Bernie Nichols, they had Corey Millen, they had Bobby Holy, you know, and I can't forget that they were loaded at center, started and Lou was famous for starting everybody in the minors anyway. Right, yeah. right. And Scott Niedemeyer, obviously different story, but right. everybody else basically started in the minor leagues, went down there. You know, I, funny story, Herb Brooks. So Lou hires Herb Brooks because there was about seven or eight of us that panned out from the 1987, 88, 89 draft, and Lou brought Herb Brooks in to be our head coach in Utica, New York. I mean, come on, Herb Brooks, he's not going to be <laughs> yeah, here, right. right? Tom McVee was our, the head coach for the Devils. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tom man, McVee. he was great. So Herb, oh, they, they hired yeah. Herb Brooks basically to teach us about the pro lifestyle and this and that. And Herb was all, I'm like, I'm getting sent down to the minors. Herb Brooks, my coach, man. Yeah. I'm a USA kid. It was great. Yeah. Um, but it was like, yeah, I led the team in scoring. One of the top scores. I got one game up that year. The next year, I had a great camp. Got sent down again. You know, Robin Fatorik was the head coach. Herb moved up, got one game up that year, was leading scorer again. And in my third year of training camp, that was when LaMera came in. And uh, I try to tell people this story all the time. Just just stick with it. Don't burn any bridges and just work hard and keep your mouth shut, right? Yeah. So my third training camp, I came in having a great camp, you know, and that was back when there was like 80 guys would come into camp. Yep. You know, and they would cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. And that was back when you had 12 exhibition games. These kids yeah. don't realize we used to have 10 to 12 exhibition games. You know, college kids, my first year coming out, I'm exhausted after the exhibition game, man. And we got 80 games to play. <laughs> yeah. Junior kids had a total advantage, you know? So I go to camp my third year. LaMera comes in with Larry Robinson, Jacques Caron, having a great camp. And there was eight lines still left. And it was like seven games into it. I didn't play one preseason game yet. I'm like, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And the, the, you know, you know how you come in and you look on the board, don't read into it. I'm on the eighth line, man. I'm on the eighth line. I'm like, I'm not reading into this. Like, come on, man, really? But then like the eighth game, it was basically, I think we had 10, 10 games that year preseason, the eighth game. It was against the Rangers, Madison Square Garden. He put me with me, Ben Hankinson and Brian Sullivan. And we were basically taking to go down right after that game. I had a great game. I stayed up the whole rest of camp right to the end, right? And then I'm getting sent down. And I'll, it's a funny story. I'm in there with Jacques Lemaire and Larry Robinson. I'm like, you know, hey, guys, come on. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. In my third year, I'm leading score two years in a row. I'm ready, you know. And I wasn't I, – I guess I, I got them a little perturbed, right? So Jacques finally <laughs> says, Jimmy, I was broken English. He goes, Jimmy, this is preseason. Me and Larry can play in preseason games. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, I go, yeah, I go, I get it. I go, I'm just letting you know I'm ready. I go, guys, I'm not going to go down with a bad attitude. I'm just like, I'm ready to play, right? So, I, I you know, it was hilarious when he said that. He was probably <laughs> right. Larry Robinson probably still could have played. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I, yeah. I was 93, 94. I get sent down. I tear it up right off the bat. You know, I get called up. I scored my first goal against the Quebec Nordiques in my first game up that year. That was the game when Mike Beluso for Tony Twist, member in Quebec, and Mike Peluso's helmet came off, and they're on the way down. And Twister hit him one more time. Yeah. His head hit the ice. Oh, I remember uh, that. The building went silent. It was crazy. That was my first that was game. My first game up that year, and I scored a goal. Wow. Really. Yeah. And then the rest is history. So I was up for a month. They were still loaded at center, right? I get sent back down. I'm like, all right, nobody go back down, tear it up again. Funny story. You guys will love this one. So <laughs> we're sitting there. This was one with the third year in Albany. I was living with Kevin Dean, me, him, Ben Hankins, and Mike Bodner, Chuck. You know, and we're, we're out all night, right? Get home, whatever. My phone, the phone's ringing. Our house phones. We didn't have cell phones. Yeah, right. <laughs> house phone's ringing from like 
six thirty till eight o'clock for an hour and a half. None of us are getting up to get it. None of us find me. I'm like, motherfucker, what's going on here, man? <laughs> I, I pick up the phone, like basically no sleep. Robin for twerks, like, Jimmy, where the fuck are you? What's going on? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, listen, you just got called up. Get your fucking ass ready. Let's go. I'm like, all right. So, and the story goes, I, I got up, got in there. I flew to Pittsburgh. The team was playing in Pittsburgh. And that year was 93, 94. The Devils hadn't lost more than two games in a row once the whole year. And the story goes, remember Johnny Weisbrod? He was our, our general manager for the Albany River Rats. And Lou wanted to bring Dave and Emma up that day. And, and he was fighting back. He's going to take Jimmy Dowd. Jimmy's playing better. He's the best player right now. And finally, Lou said, all right, fuck it. Just bring Dowd up. He's only coming up to practice. And he's going right back. Because Bernie Nichols' son, remember Bernie Nichols had a son that passed away. Oh, my God, yeah. In, 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 like a year old. So Bernie had to fly back out to uh, California. So I'm like, obviously, working on no sleep. I fly into Pittsburgh. We have the, the team has a, a practice, you know. I had a sick practice, like unbelievable. Everything just freaking <laughs> done. I don't Guilt, play a little guilty. Practice, little guilty. Yeah, right, right? So guilty. I, don't, I don't play that night, right? They lose. It's the first time all year they lost three games in a row, right? They lose. They were playing Pittsburgh back to back that night in Pitt and then the next night in New Jersey. So they lose. Jock's pissed. We come back to Jersey. They keep me up. He puts me in. I get a goal and three assists, and the rest is history. Wow. Come on. Like, dude, yeah. That's how I got to the NHL, like, full time. Like, it's crazy how stuff works. So, going back to your whole point, yeah, I was a scorer. I was a scorer. But, you know, I try to tell people, sooner or later, when you're not the best anymore, you're not scoring. You got to find a way to fit in. There were so many guys that are 25, 26, 28 years old when they're not top six forward or something. They whine and bitch, and they're out. Right. A hundred percent. You know me. I just want to be on a team. I love winning. And the best was – when you have success early on, we lost to the Rangers in the conference final. We won a cup. I could play on the first line. I could play on the fourth line. I could penalty kill, power play, whatever. I was just a good, reliable player. And I, didn't, I played 17 years. Like, come on, man. Yeah. And so yep. many times, it's all, it's all mental. It's so true. All the cliches you hear after a while, it's just mental. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Totally mental. Yeah. If you work hard, have a good attitude, be a good teammate, that's all that matters. You can yeah. play for a long time. Yeah, well, yeah you've yeah, proven that. Was, was it uh... – was it difficult for you? Like, I'm not sure what kind of style you guys played it uh, in college. I'm with the points. I'm imagining you were, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they were, you know, how it's, it's, you know, when everybody called the devils, the trap team and all that. Yeah. They called us a clutch and grab team at Lake state, but um, come on, man. We destroyed everybody. We well, I was going to say your, points. the points, I mean, your <laughs> points alone are like, yeah, man. I mean, so, Crazy. but what I was going to ask you is, so you, you, you go to Utica and then Albany for a little bit as yeah, well. Yeah your leading score um, were you guys, was it difficult when you got called up because they were playing more of that trap or were you guys playing that in Albany as well? Or in, no, 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 that, that, that wasn't the case at all. Like when I got called up to the Dallas, I was on uh, the, the two cup run years there, 93, 94, 94, 95. I, it was the best. I was on a third line, which is the best line to be on the NHL because nobody yeah. checks you. The first yeah. line canceled. So it was me, Billy Garrett and Zella Pukin. I mean, think about Zella that. Pukin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. There. You know, and Jock Lemaire is like, Jimmy, this is your job. Oh, uh, no, Billy, this is your job. You go up and down the ice and shoot the puck. Zelly, you go drive the net. Jimmy, you get the puck, pass to Billy, he shoots, you stay high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.